Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Hudson. Um, for those of you who haven't seen this show, my name is Arthur Bergeron. Uh, I'm an attorney. I do nothing but elder law. I work at Myrick O'Connell. There are 70 of us. Biggest law firm outside of Boston, so everybody gets to do what they like doing. Um, and I do nothing but elder law because I'm old, right? I'm turning 70 in January. How exciting, turning 70 in January. Oh. You remember, remember? I remember 70. I remember my dad would always say, ah, oh, to be 80 again. I told a <laughs> client of mine that recently. He said, ah, oh, to be 90 again, right? So, so anyway, I do elder law. Um, but the purpose of this show is not to talk about law, but really to talk about my friends Frank and Mary. Um, many of you have heard of them or seen them and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr., and their goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if you live in Hudson, that means you want all of that to happen in Hudson. You don't want to move far away. You don't want to go to San Diego where your son lives or where you, to D.C. where your daughter lives. You want to stay around here. So uh, because this is really about um, aging in Hudson, staying in Hudson, I wanted a real co-host co that really knew about that. And so my friend Jackie Kapopoulos, mm -hmm. whom I met through my friend Janice Long at, uh -huh. the, at the Senior Center, right, who was my original host, I know. but got so shy about doing this. She said, I can't stand it. Now, does she strike you as kind of the wallflower? No, I don't a, understand. She's very busy, and, and I, she's think busy. That, That's uh, I think it's hard for her to make the time to get away. That's Because there were a couple times, because yeah. she's so dedicated, yeah. and yeah. something and would come bad up. she canceling, yep. so she yep. asked me if I could step in. And you've been kind enough to do that, which I has have. been terrific. And the reason why you you got to step in was because you're, you're the the chairman of the board of the? I am the vice president. The vice president, excuse me. Of the me. friends of the Of the friends of the Hudson, right. I was the president yeah. um, at the time I, I volunteered. But there this. was a palace coup and they threw you out? Uh, they threw no. me out, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't, never, never. Yeah. They never. Can't stay in office over two terms. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. That's a really good idea. Yeah. So, you're, but you're still very actively very involved. Very active, yep. And so we wanted to start off by talking about kind of what the friends are doing. And then I wanted to talk a little bit about how you got onto the Friends. And then I wanted to talk about what you did before then, because I think it's really relevant to an issue that we're going to be talking about a lot over the next year. So mm -hmm. start off. What's going on at the Friends? OK, well, right now we're preparing for our annual uh, fall fair. The fall fair. Which is going to be on November 2nd. Yeah. And What day we, of the week is that? Um, it is a Saturday. It's a Saturday? Saturday yeah. the 2nd. We've had yeah. it for years on the uh, first Saturday in November. Yeah. And we have a variety of knit goods, quilted goods, um, uh, basket raffles. Yeah. We have gift card raffles. Oh, and where does this happen? Uh, right at the Senior Center. Right at the Senior Center? Right at the Senior and, Center. And, and what time during the day? It's going from 9 to 2 in the afternoon. 9 to 2. 9 to okay. 2. And um, it's usually very well attended, and um, we serve a lunch there for three dollars. You can get two small sandwiches yeah. and chips, or you can get chili or chowder and um, cornbread. And um, so, you know, a lot of people take advantage of that. So we have really a very full day um, planned. We also knew this year we have two. Um, mediums coming. One um, one who reads cards and another one who does mediums. One's a card reader and one yep. does mediums. And um, By a it, medium you mean she's communicating with the spirit yes, world? Yes, with the spirit world. Is this during that? During the? This? It is going to be nine to two, first yep. come, first serve. Yep. It's fifteen dollars a reading. Yeah. We've had these um, events before, but on a specific day, we called it our psychic fair. Yeah. But we no longer we, we no longer have fair. a psychic fair, yeah. and it was well attended. Yeah. So um, last year we did not have it, and this year we were able to recruit two of the people who have done it in the past. Yeah. And so they're going to be doing it from nine to two. First come, first serve. Sign up. Yeah. And um, fifteen minute readings. And um, a lot of people enjoy that. So how did you come to start doing that? That's the first I time have, I've heard of a senior I have center no doing this. I have no idea how it started. Um, but when a lot of people, I can remember my mother-in-law. Yeah. She loved to have her cards read or her fortune told. Or her fortune you told. You know, they used to have fortune telling yeah. parties, yeah, things yeah. like that. 
And so they used to have fortune telling parties. Oh, yeah, yeah, way back in the day, way back in the like day, in the sixties. Like, yeah? yeah, in the sixties in Cambridge, where I originally came from. Oh, you're from Cambridge. So they, uh, this yeah, explains not the it. Country. This explains it. <laughs> right, you're from the right. People's Republic of Cambridge. Yes, well, that's yes, a different. Yes, that's yes. a whole different zone over there, right? So. Um, so it's very popular. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people uh, are really into it. They're into astrology, that kind of thing. So, yeah. um, you know, the suggestion was made, why don't we try to have a couple of readers come yeah. and see if that brings more people yeah. to the fair. We also have a gift shop will be open, and there's a large um, quantity of jewelry, um, uh, this and that, pocketbooks. Um, uh, so uh, there's there's a lot going on. Just a ton of stuff. Yeah, Just and a it's a fun it's a fun day. You know, we yeah. have um, coffee, uh, complimentary coffee, and um, we usually have out a bucket of uh, donut holes. Yeah. And um, people can just kind of browse and, and browse they can around. stay yeah. for lunch and, and then leave or, or whatever. Now, now, and are all proceeds to the friends? All the proceeds goes to the friends. And, ta and so give, give us a sense, because the question always comes up. So what do they do with their money? What do the friends do uh, with, what well, do you do we, with your money? We, we do a lot with that money. We, yeah. sub, we help Janice. You don't go to Foxwoods all the time. No, the, no. the officers don't get, the vice president doesn't get a no. big stipend out of this? No, uh, no, 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 no. All volunteer all work, volunteer. Arthur, yeah. all yeah. volunteer work. Um, well, we, um, like, the senior center's printer broke down. We bought them a big industrial state-of-the-art printer, printer to replace. Oh, that's um, a big ticket We pay item. for all the postage for the newsletters that go out. We um, pay for, um, we help with some programs that Janice can't pay for entirely or on, on her own right. um, through grants, and so we subsidize. Um, uh, we bought the two buses for the senior center. You bought the buses? The, the friends bought the buses. And we just bought one these bus. Are, these are big ticket items. They are big ticket items. And we're getting another bus in, yep. uh, another new bus in January. So, um, right now we have a certain amount of money set aside because we have a, a, a deck existing on the back of, yep. the, um, of the senior center. It never, never gets, gets used. used. Never gets used. I remember the first time I saw it. I think I'd been there for five years before yeah. I even saw the deck. Yeah, no, it never Great gets concept. used. Great concept. It overlooks it the It is pond. a beautiful concept, but it never gets used. It, yeah. It's full sun all day. Yeah. So um, we have a we did a study and we had um, an estimator come in and estimate how much it would cost, and um, the friends voted to put aside a certain amount of money in order to have that enclosed. Oh. Um, so this has been going on for four years. Yep. It's going to be a town project. A couple of estimates came in for the project like $100,000 over what we were told initially it would be. Um, so we're looking at different alternatives and trying to find a way that we can make it happen. Um, because we really want it to happen. And that would be like a, it would be an all-purpose room, but really yeah. we want, we want, we have a beautiful library. And what we've done, we put a pool room in. Yeah. And when we put the pool room in, the people who played games had to move into the library in order to play their games. games. They set up two tables right. and they played their games. And what we want to do is have this room yeah. for them to play their so games. So that'll be the game room. So it'll be it's like a, very a game room. It's a very attractive but it, space. But it would, and it would be also overflow for some of the events that we have, the dinners right. that we have. Yeah. So it would, it would create extra space. It's really a very simple design. I mean, we didn't go crazy. We went with the most... Um, practical concept for design um, that wasn't going to be 
any involve any wasteful or, or frills right. spending. It's going to be just very simple. Well, that's true of your whole senior center, though. It's very practically. I mean, it's very attractive, but it's very practically oh, designed. Oh, it's 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 right. beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, it's um, you know, it's it's just it's an older house, and it was just redesigned beautifully. So, I would assume that you're not paying for stuff like that just with money from the senior fair. So over, how do oh, people do, do people make money, large contributions to the Money has accumulated and accumulated yeah. over the years. So that when, Now it's been my experience that money doesn't just accumulate. People have been somebody's been paying attention. Uh, somebody's right. been paying attention and right. really way before I came. Yeah. Going years past. Yeah. For a rainy day, yeah. you know, and when I became president, I felt like now was the time to spend some of this money yeah. on um, on a project like that and closing the deck because it would be, you know, valuable. Uh, the pool room, we bought the pool tables for the pool room. So, you know, uh, we, we provided a lot of, it, um, of the essentials for activities right. there. If, um, Which is why you get a lot of people. We get a lot of people, so right. we isn't, had it isn't we just had a this shell, right? we had this amount of money yeah. that we felt like we could safely invest in having this room done. So now you know we um, we it and it didn't jeopardize if something it, it, if another printer went, we'd still be able right. to pay for another printer. It didn't jeopardize any future projects, and it certainly didn't. Um, empty out a, a bank account. So are but, you still thinking that this is going to happen like in the coming year, like in 2020? Well, don't know. It's been on the burner for four years now, you know, and um, things go to snail's well, pace. Well, you know, I'm getting I'm getting older here now, Jackie. Oh, so I listen, just want, I'm getting older. I want, you know, you don't seem to age much, but I'm like falling apart. So I want I want to know that I can still use this room. I was hoping before I ended my, um, my uh, presidency that yeah. it would be a done deal. Yeah. It, and, and it's not. But we're we're hoping we're still hoping that we can find that, a way to happen. do it. That this you will know? happen. So um, so that's where that's at. And um, what we're what we're trying to do now is Janice has another program that she would like to consider starting now. Mm -hmm. For you folks out there listening, <coughs> this, Excuse this, me. this is just in the talking stages. Um, but she would like to have what they call a, um, a cafe. Mm -hmm. like Northboro have, has, and serve lunches and dinners at this cafe um, mm -hmm. for a certain amount of money. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, very affordable. Yep. But we would need to hire a chef, and we would need to give, you know, infuse it with seed money from the I was going to say, do you, do you have a kitchen for that? Do you have an we industrial, do. You have an industrial we have kitchen? A, uh, we have a full-service kitchen. That's great. We have a full serve. As a matter of fact, for the um, Hudson, for our fall fair, we yeah. make apple pies. We make 50 apple pies, and we do all of that oh, in our kitchen. Oh, so that's a kitchen. good size kitchen. Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful kitchen. Now, okay. I have, now, have you been to the Northboro one? The Northboro? The cafe? Yeah. No, I have not. You got to go. Janice, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, well, amazing. there you go. But that, that's one of the things, one of the great things about that, that Janice has really done is she's really worked on that collaboration I know you folks in Northboro right. and Marlboro, they become the, they're like the three the three amigos mm -hmm. now at the, at the Council on Aging, the statewide meetings, right? And they're always thinking of new programs. Right. And incidentally, I know that I, or was it Janice who was just telling me that regarding that Daybreak program, which was really initiated here, the the you know the drop off right. once again the drop off program Correct. for folks who have got you know a, 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 a caregiver and a spouse, and someone has memory issues, right? That had expanded to the other two communities, and now you're even including Sudbury in it. Starting very shortly, Sudbury is going to do either Mondays or Fridays, so you're now going to be able to offer people really four days a week, right. at, which is great. Oh, which is great. It's fabulous. People need a, 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 a respite from yes. the daily, you know. Um, but it shows that kind of each, each, each one is, is developing their own programs, and then it's great. As the friends, mm -hmm. Because you folks have been, you know, good with, you know, kind of you, you saving the money for the right kind of program, you have that ability to seed a program to see if it works. Mm -hmm. So, like as you say, the, this notion of being able to seed the money 
for the chef. I know that in, in, in Northboro, that's just what they did. The Friends right. financed the chef until the program ended up attracting so many people, and it gets a ton of people now, of course, they got a good chef, right? Mm -hmm. Gets a ton of people, and now it pays for itself. That's right. Even at these very discounted rates, and now they're hiring like a second person there, mm -hmm. Because they, you know, they don't, they don't, they need more staff. That's wonderful. Which is great. That's wonderful. Which is Anything great. Anything that can, you know, help get seniors out and social, and enjoying life. Yes. You know. Yes. Um, and I think that's what the senior center is all about. I know it's what Janice is all about. And and I, I guess this comes, this gets to a topic that I know I had mentioned to you. I'd like to just talk a little bit about because of your own background. Mm -hmm. which is, I know that, be, so before you did all of this stuff, right, you, you, you weren't like spend your life preparing to be the, the friends of the <laughs> no. senior, right? You, you, you had a, a career in really a, a lot of it at Marlboro Hospital, right? Right, I was a nurse at Marlboro Hospital. Um, I did a little bit of medical surgical nursing, but yeah. then when the psychiatric unit opened, I went there and yeah. spent the last 30 years of my career working in a psychiatric setting. Just, yeah, and in, in dealing with people who've got this whole variety of... Absolutely. We, de we dealt with a lot of um, the aging population, yeah. um, people with dementia, people with depression, um, and um, they would come to us and they'd get med evaluations and they yeah. would get physical workups too. And, um, and then, uh, you know, um, Either sent back home with follow-up appointments or day treatment um, or, or some sort of a setting that was appropriate. That was order. appropriate. Cause, and I think that's kind of one of the, I don't want to say it's like, a, it's like a secret, but it's just one, when you think about having a, 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 a psych unit in a hospital, you don't typically think about that being a place where a lot of seniors go. Right. And there are a lot of seniors that mm -hmm. go, right? Because mm -hmm. as you mentioned, there are folks with, with dementia symptoms, mm -hmm. there were folks with depression, and and I think, I think the statistic was like that that depression is like the fourth largest causer mm -hmm. of dementia, mm -hmm. right? Because it just it's one of those things that just leads you leads you down that path, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, from from your experience dealing with that stuff, how, how does where do you think all of that is going? Do you, do you think that the that the care for those folks has has changed much since you were there? And, 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 and how, do, how do seniors deal with it? And the reason why I ask is, I, I know that one of, the, one of the reasons I encourage se seniors, right, to get involved with the Senior Center is to really, so that you really have this whole network of folks, mm -hmm. right, so that as you get older, among other things, you, you, so first of all, as you're younger, if you're younger and still healthy, you can be helping. And then as you get older, there are people who you know who are going to be there. Because mm -hmm. one of the hardest things for folks, once again, I think of it compared to when we were growing up, there are no families. Mm -hmm. There are no family For most people, there are no large families around that can really kind of help you when you have an emergency. So you really need to be kind of being part of that community. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a real challenge. It's well, real I challenge. think that, you know, with people, the whole population is getting older. You know, I mean, there were cures where they weren't cures before. Um, it's and, amazing. Uh, I mean, amazing. look at all the um, the assisted care facilities that are going up, the over 55 facilities that are going up. All of those things encourage socialization and um, community. Um, a lot of the assisted care facilities have independent they have three different levels. They have the independent, and you can take part in the activities of the assisted portion, the assisted, and then they um, have, a lot of them have nursing homes, a lot of them have dementia units. Or at least memory, memory, memory communities. Memory communities. Yes. That seems that's to be a, kind of a standard part of the model. Now, yeah. I know I just did the permitting for the one that's being built in Marlboro, right on Bolton Street next uh -huh. to the school. Mm -hmm. And and that has a has a uh, a memory care wing, you All know, right. and I think that's I bet that's just going to be very common. Uh -huh. So so you really have the in those places. So that you know, I all of all of this I think really speaks to the um, growing aging population, and the problems that go with it. That go with you it. You know, I mean, because I mean, it's wonderful to live longer, but you know, 
we're like an old car. We constantly need tune-ups yeah, and tune we need um, uh, maybe new parts and, uh, you know, we need a lot of maintenance. And if you're Frank and Mary, if, if, if your goal, I know for a lot of folks, they, they either for financial reasons or just because they don't want to live with somebody right on the other side of a wall, you know, mm -hmm. they want to stay in their home. But then you're, the, what's hard about that is you, you're just in your home, mm -hmm. right? And, you're, and the tendency is just to stay in the house, you know? And your, neighbor, and your neighbors oftentimes, will, well, for many of the, like some of the sub subdivisions, when I think about the, like Lakeview, there's mm -hmm. still folks at Lakeview that were fir are first time owners from Lakeview, right? Yep. But the neighborhood's kind of changed. Oh, it has, yeah. You know? I used to live in Lakeview. You did? Yeah. So, so to, to to be to stay social there, so many of the people that you knew and you, they, you know, you would you would babysitting right. for the kids next door, but right. they've grown up and they've gone. Right. So right. then, how do how do you connect up? Well, I think that is you know, every individual is very different. Um, the senior center is a great avenue. They have a bus that will pick people up, bring them to the center, pick them up, take them to shop or, you know, um, pick them up and take them to a doctor's appointment. Um, some people do well with socialization. They, they, they want it. We have one resident, and actually she lives where I live. Where, where are you, where I are you now? I live at the Esplanade. You on you're at the Street. Esplanade. And she's in her 90s, and yep. she's right in the unit next to me. Yep. And she has two sons who uh, really quite attentive to her. Yeah. But she goes to the senior I love that center. place, by the way. Oh, thank you. I love, I love the unit. Yeah. I love the elevator. You know, yeah. it's so it accommodating. It is a perfect place for someone downsizing, right. uh, to me. Um, but anyway, um, and she goes to the senior center, and she just sits there. She rarely engages in conversation with anyone. But she's there amongst other people. She doesn't play any games or participate in any activities. Um, she'll eat the food that's there. Yeah. She might have lunch there. Yeah. But, um, but she just likes being But there. she just likes being with herself. And, um, and other people love to go sit there and just talk. But I, I notice a lot of people who sit in the great room and yep. drink coffee and um, don't really do a lot of conversing. I think it's just having people around them and some activity going on. Yes. Um, and again, you know, people, I think some people don't, don't want that. It's too, it's too confusing for them, too stimulating for them. Um, and that's fine as long as they are got their routine and they're not depressed. If someone is feeling isolated, there are all sorts of um, services that will come into your home now. Uh, companions. Um, if people get to um, uh, end of life um, kind of situations, companions will come in and be with them and get to know them to help them through all of this. You know, it's nice. It it's a nice thought to stay in your home, it can't always be possible. But it can't always work. Right, right. right. I right. mean, it, it really depends upon the situation. I suppose one of the, one of the challenges for the senior centers going forward is just to kind of help people not be stuck. So uh, that, right. so that, because I, I think you get you get folks who, for whom, for example, as you described, that situation, like at the Esplanade, has worked out very well but then their lives start changing. Or, and, and of course, as you say, no one's getting any younger. So it always changes in one direction, mm -hmm. right? That, that it, and it isn't, you know, and, and at some point, maybe you need some more help, or maybe you are getting lonely. But, it, so, so, but the question, so by the way, for you, those of you who are watching, every <laughs> once in a while, it isn't because we have a crick in our neck, <laughs> is that every once in a while we start gossiping like this, and then somebody has to tell us to shut up. So it, you know, we, want, you know, we get kind of a note that's saying, you know, you kind of need to wrap this up, but but so that's why I did it. But so the question is, you know, how can you, how does this, how can you as a senior center kind of be con be being aware of all these folks? And that's a real challenge, right? Well, I don't think 
the senior center can be aware of all these folks. I think we're aware of the ones who reach out. Um, there are churches. I, I go to St. Michael's Church, yeah. and I know they have um, a laity that reaches out to homebound people. I know that other denominations do the same thing. So I think that there are a number of different venues that do reach out to people if they're, if they're known right. and if they want that. Um, I think it's very hard for someone, say, who's living in Lakeview, who suddenly gets, who's older, maybe starts having vision problems or starts having some coordination problems or memory problems and they find that they can't drive anymore. They've had an accident, they can't drive. And you're in you Lakeview. Know, and when you're in Lakeview, what do you do to get around if you don't have children? You know, um, you know, people, again, can use, utilize the senior center to get help, to find out where to get it, um, to have a bus come by and pick them up and drop them off. And, you know, if they want to maintain that independence. Right, right. And I think that the, the, the key to that is to make sure that people are aware of that, mm -hmm. you know, that they can, kind of the, my mantra with folks, always call a senior center. Mm -hmm. you, you don't know what you don't know. You don't know that there may be something that can really help your situation. Yeah. You know, yeah. you don't know until you call. It, and, it, but then the flip side of that is, if you're if you're a senior, also call the senior center to volunteer, mm -hmm. because that's the way this works. The only oh. way that this works into the future is if people are volunteering. And we right? need volunteers. We need people, young people in their 60s, to come and volunteer. You know, when you um, when you I, retire, come and see us. You know, um, it's very very hard to recruit um, volunteers. Um, we have a, a, a certain core of around 10 women who are getting older, yep. you know, and, uh, and that that's tends including to happen. myself. Yeah, because they tend, cause you have, tend to have a set of people mm -hmm. and your friends, you mm -hmm. know, and you kind of keep doing it, right? Yep. But then you kind of turn around and all of a sudden yeah. there's nobody. Well, we, we've done, yeah. we've, we've really tried to recruit, but yep. people may be involved in other things. Um, but, uh, but boy, in many ways, you know, once you, once you get to be our age, yeah. right? There's probably no more important place to be involved in this, than in the seniors. It's because, a great place to be involved because they're the kind of the, the kind of the eyes and ears of that community through which you can see kind of what else is going on and mm -hmm. through which you can also figure out what what interests you have right that could really help some other people. Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of people have time right. So for the for this for this program, I'm going to ask our fo our producers to also add a banner to this which is the line for the senior center. Do you, do you, now, do you, recall the do you have the phone number or, or we're just gonna put it up, right? I don't. We're gonna make sure that we put that up because that the, I think one of the purposes of the show, other than to gossip and to find out, and by the way, you ought to go to the, the to go, to, go to the senior fair and if you get any questions about it, you should be giving them a call. Really, please come, please come and, and look the organization over, ask some questions, um, commitments aren't, excessive if you're a right. volunteer. It's not like you're going to be locked into something, you know, a certain day a week, every month or, or whatever. It's very loose. So uh, please don't be afraid of being overly committed. Right. You can right. do lots of other things besides be a be a volunteer at the senior dollar. center. Yeah. Right. And and it and it's and and if you and if you're frank, if you want to live here for the rest of your life and you're still healthy, you owe it. You owe it because at some point you're going to be wanting withdrawals from that favor bank, right? Because you're going to be wanting to have someone pick you up, and that could be the you could be the person picking somebody up right now. Mm -hmm. you, you're going to be wanting that meal to be delivered by one of those Meals on Wheels volunteers, and that's the, those are people at the senior center. So we're we're kind of once again I'm turning 70 in January. We're all in this together. We're all in this together. But the only way this works is if the folks who have got things to give are giving so that the folks who need things
can be getting. Yep. Otherwise, this just isn't going to work. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. Thank I hope you. you. I hope you enjoy this program. Thanks a million, Jack. Thank I, you. This is just what I was hoping we could okay. accomplish, right? Okay. We'll see you on the next installment. Oh, and then on the next installment, uh, Janice Allen told me I should be advertising this. Because it's Medicare, it's sign-up season again. We're going to have folks from the Senior Center, and that's the place where you should be talking to be looking not only at what your drug plan might be that would work the best for you, but more generally what your Medicare plan should be. We all, many of us older folks, don't still think that Medicare is just about Medicare A and B, the standard plans. No one's looked at these Medicare Advantage plans, mm -hmm. which can be very, very, very helpful to you, and you can sign up new every year. So we're gonna, we hope you watch the next program. We hope you stop at the fair. If you're healthy, volunteer. If you think you need something, call and find out if they can get it for you. Thanks very much for watching. We'll, we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Hudson. Thank you.